Good afternoon, dear learners. My name is Dr. Sumit Prasad. In this session, we will be discussing about the concept of demand and supply. This session is divided into two parts. The first part comprises of demand, introduction to demand, and the second part is comprises with introduction to supply. Now, before proceeding further with this session, let me revise you some previous concept of the first first part. Then, why do we need to study economics? The concept of the need to study economics arises from two basic problems of the economy. These are scarcity of resources and multiplicity of demand. What does economics do? Economics tries to create a bridge between the scarcity of resources and multiplicity of demand. Now, what are scarcity of resources and multiplicity of demand? It means that we are having very limited resources in our economy, in any economy, and there are various demand which are increasing day by day, which are increasing exponentially. so economics tries to answer a problem which says that what to produce how to produce and for whom to produce now proceeding further with this all these concept we are also aware of the of the fact that there are basic three economic agents in an economy which are uh, laborers capitalist and government now proceeding further with the concept of supply let me uh, let me bifurcate these two variables for you the first the first side of the economy is demand and the other side of the economy is supply now de- how supply demand and supply used to complement each other understanding to this concept let me tell you about the economic agent suppose the first economic agent are household and the other economic agents are firms now household supply labor to firms household supply labor to firm, firms in lieu of which firm supply remuneration and wages to household as a result of which households are able to generate demand for particular commodities from the firms which means that they say they force firms to produce and upon production of those commodities firms supply those goods and services to household and in in this manner a close cycle has been completed between households and firms household supply labor firm supply wages household demands goods and services firm supply goods and services and this is how the economy can be understand now when we understand that when we explain the concept of demand it is the demand household side of economy now when we say supply then we will be discussing about the firm side of economy so it means as the name suggests supply means it indicates the quantity supplied by household now what is quantity some supply quantity supplied is at a particular price at a particular point of time and at a particular place the amount of a commodity which has been supplied by a supplier is known as quantity supplied in the similar manner demand demand generated demand generated can be classified as at a particular point of time at a particular place the amount of commodity demanded by household is known as quantity demanded now in the uh, supply side of economy when we explain supply we used to explain supply using a supply curve now as we are aware of the fact that as price increases the quantity demanded decreases but in case of supply or in case of firms we are aware of the fact that as and when the prices are rising the supplier wants to supply more and more commodity it means that the supplier wants to sell more and more commodity in the market so that they can obtain they can receive super normal profits from the market which means that price and quantity supplied now we will be denoting supply as s s with the character s now as we as we have understand in the uh, demand curve section that demand falls with the rise in price Uh, demand falls with the rise in price and demand increases with the fall in price on the contrary price and supply are having a direct relationship which means that price and supply moves in same direction which means that when the price of a commodity rises the supply of that commodity rises and when the price of commodity falls then the quantity supplied of that particular commodity also falls which means that the shape of supply curve will be uh, upward moving from left to right direction now if we say that the price of a commodity is p1 then the quantity supplied is q1 
Now at a particular point of time, if the price of commodity rises, suppose it rises from P1 to P2, then we say that the supplier, then the supply side of economic will try to supply more and more commodities in the market so that they can have, so that they can obtain maximum profits from the market, which means that with the increase in price, the quantity supplied has been increased. And this is how supply curve can be generated in a market. Now, now as we have explained in the demand section, that demand is a function of various, various, uh, various elements in the similar manner, factor is, uh, supply is also affected by various factors. These factors are technology, price of inputs and price of related goods. Now, when we say supply of a particular commodity, then uh, we have to understand that various factors of production that are used while producing a particular commodity. Now see, factor of production has been classified in four basic categories. These are land, labor, capital and entrepreneurship. So these four factors of production are required for producing any particular commodity. What is land? As we have categorized the factor of production as land, labor, capital and entrepreneurship. What is that? Land can be categorized as all the natural resources that are existing in our economy, that are existing in our environment are categorized under the category of land. Now the second factor of production is labor. Labor comprises of the contribution that we made towards any firm which can be in the form of physical labor or it can be in the form of mental labor. The third variable is technology. With the increase in technological advancement, we are able to produce more and more goods and services by optimizing our various input variables, various raw materials, which means that we are able to produce, we are able to produce more optimized output than we are producing earlier. For example, earlier car used to give a mileage of 12 km per hour, but now the cars are able to give a mileage of 16 km, 20, 25 km per hour. This is technological advancement. They're, the cars are doing the same purpose, they are fulfilling the same purpose, but their efficiency has been increased to uh, another level. And the fourth and important variable is entrepreneurship. Now, entrepreneurship is a skill which comprises which uh, which comprises of these three variables. It means that entrepreneurship, a person who is using the, the remaining three factors of production in different proportionate to produce different types of goods and services, is known as entrepreneurial skill. Yeah, fourth uh, fourth skill that is known as fourth factor of production, which is known as entrepreneurship. Now, we are understanding the factor affecting supply. The first factor that affects supply is technology. As I have already told you that with the technological advancement, the price of particular commodities are reducing as a result of which supply is also changing in the market. Again, as we have explained in the concept of demand that there are movement or shift in the demand curve. Now, similarly, we have understand the uh, movement along the supply curve. Now, the question arises, do we have shifts in the demand curve also, uh, supply curve also? Yes, we also have shifts in supply curve also. Supply curve also shifts in inward and outward direction. Then what are the conditions? Then what are the conditions in which a demand curve shift inward or outward? Now, understanding shift in the supply curve, as we, are, as we know that the supply curve moves from uh, moves, uh, moves in upward direction, moving from left to right and if we say that at a particular price, the quantity demanded is, at a price of P1, the quantity demanded is Q1. Now as we, as I am explaining you the concept, the factor affecting supply, which is technology, price of input. Now what are what is price of input? Price of input is price of those factor of production. Price of factor of production, the price of using natural resources that are raw material. Price of using labor, that is the wages we pay towards the contribution of labor. Capital, the price that we pay for capital, for technology. And the last is price of related goods. Now, as I say that there are uh, there occurs a technological advancement in the society which has resulted into reduction in price of a particular commodity, which means that price of production has been reduced which means that price of production has been reduced but the producer is maintaining the same price as a result of which as a result of which the demand curve shifts in outward direction and the supplier is able to 
supplier is able to supply more quantity at same price which the supplier is supplying in the market at q1 it means that the price of factor of production has been reduced as a result of which the total cost of production has been reduced as a result of which the producer is able to produce more of the more of same commodities which the producer is making previously for example if we say that uh, a, a, a chai wala is making tea the price of a tea is 10 rupees in a market and the price of price of making that tea is uh, 5 rupees uh, per se and the uh, and the tea producer is uh, earning a profit of 5 rupees and if we say that price of making tea has been reduced to 2.5 rupees and again uh, he is selling the same price the, as a result of which the price is remaining the same but the quantity supplied has been increased which means that he was selling one cup of tea with a cost of production rupees 5 now he can sell two cup of tea with a cost of production of rupees 5 and making a profit of 5 rupees which he was uh, making earlier in the market so this is how the supply curve shifts outward and vice versa if the price of factor of production has been increased then the then the supply curve has been shifted in inward direction due to which the quantity supplied due to which the quantity supplied has been reduced to q3 and this is how there is a shift in the supply curve in outward direction and inward direction now a million dollar question arises that why do we need to study this supply and demand curve again as in the as in the case of we have explained the demand curve then a demand curve is a demand curve for an individual and for making is an aggregate demand curve we have to submit all those demand curve similarly in the supply curve also we have to aggregate we have to submit all the individual supply curve to make it a aggregate supply curve now the question arises why do we need to study the concept of demand and supply now at a particular point of time the consumer wants maximum quantity at a minimum price and at same time the supplier want to want to sell maximum quantity at maximum price so we need to create a bridge we need to identify a particular point where a supplier is ready to supply a commodity at a price on which a buyer is able is able or is ready to particular is ready to buy that particular commodity it means that if we say this is a demand curve which is sloping downward and we say there is a supply curve which is sloping upward and we want to we want to establish a equilibrium a equilibrium at which this is a this is demand side this is supply side we want to establish a equilibrium a equilibrium where buyer is able to buy is ready to buy and seller is ready to sell so for identifying that particular point what do we do we superimpose these two curves we superimpose this supply curve this supply curve over this demand curve like this and the point of intersection of these demand and supply curve says that this is the point where at this price q1 quantity q1 will be supplied and the consumer is ready to buy that particular quantity at this particular price level now what happen if this price fluctuates if this price fluctuates to this level then quantity supply is increased and demand has been reduced has been reduced as a result of which there arises a disequilibrium in this equilibrium level as a result of which the excess quantity reduces the demand and it again come back to this level and this is how consumer equilibrium has been established using demand and supply curve now upon completion of this unit i believe that you will be able to understand the concept of demand and supply demand curve supply curve various functions various factors that are affecting demand curve that are affecting demand and supply and uh, law of demand and law of supply as law of demand says at a particular point of time with the increase of price of a particular commodity the demand of that commodity decreases and vice versa and on the supply side considering all the variables constant with the increase of a But with the increase of price of a particular commodity, the quantity demanded of that commodity increases, and vice versa. Again, the last thing that I want to explain is 
as i have told you again in again economics that considering all the other variables constant we have to do that because understanding the effect of one variable considering all the other variables uh, affecting the same thing at a time is not a very good approach or it is not very effective approach that, uh, that's why what we do we maintain our satiris paribus satiris paribus means considering all the other variables constant we study the effect of only single variable and this is how we study economics thank you very much